Good afternoon and welcome everyone. It's now just a little bit past noon. Um, happy Friday, October 30th here, and I'm uh, joining you from Concord, Massachusetts. My name is Christopher Cahill from 12 Points Wealth Management. Very honored to be here with Dr. Chris Pearson, the founder and CEO of Black Cloak. Um, we're going to present um, today on the cyber attack as the cyber attacks as they migrate to the wealthy and what things that we need to be aware of. Um, so we're going to give the other folks just a couple of minutes to log in. We have a big crowd today. We want to make sure that everybody that signed up can log in. So we'll be starting in just a moment here. Okay, so one moment and we'll be right back. All right, so we're hitting critical mass. Chris, um, let's begin the process here in the program here, if you can. Um, thank you. So as you see here, this is my, my bio, Christopher Cahill from 12 Points Wealth Management. As I said, I run the Family Office Services Group here. I've been in the financial services industry for 20 plus years. I work primarily with lawyers, law firms, business owners, C-suite execs, and other wealthy families. Um, I'm an attorney by training and background, a certified financial planner, and a chartered advisor in philanthropy. And my skill set allows me to really focus on all things planning oriented estate, financial planning, business succession planning, charitable planning, portfolio management, et cetera. Really honored to be with you all today, and particularly honored to have Chris Pearson from Black Cloak with us, who's going to um, run this presentation. I'm going to moderate. And um, there's a lot of material here today, so we're going to try and just jump right into it. Thanks, Chris. Hey, Chris. Uh, thank you so much, and a big thank you to a uh, big thank you to everyone at 12 Points. Uh, really, really appreciate it, um, and to all of you, uh, the attendees for today, uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to join us, especially as you navigate the uh, world of Halloween candy and uh, Halloween costumes in this age of uh, COVID. So uh, I'm Chris Pearson. I'm the CEO, founder of Black Cloak. Black Cloak is a concierge cybersecurity and privacy protection platform. It is designed from the ground up for high, ultra high net worth individuals so we can protect them and their families from cybersecurity, reputational privacy at any theft uh, and other risks. Um, all very high touch, all very concierge. Today is an educational session, right? It's about us talking to you about the current state of cybersecurity, uh, talking to you about why, besides money, right? We, yes, we get money as a big motivator, but why besides money and how the wealthy are being targeted? And then we're gonna talk to you about the risks and the solutions. This is gonna be a critical part. This is gonna be the, the, the kind of the 30 minutes of the, of the presentation day on literally, I'm gonna say exactly how you're being targeted. And I'm gonna tell you what the solution is. And we'll go back and forth, back and forth over four things, privacy, cybersecurity of your devices, your home, and this peace of mind area. These are all the other elements that get added in there that help you better protect yourself and your family. Then I'll open it up for questions. If you have questions, uh, uh, please go ahead and send them in to Chris. Chris is manning the questions. What's key about this is, uh, well, two things are, are key is, you can't get it wrong. If you ask for Chris, one of us is gonna respond. Second thing is, um, if you have a question, send it in to him. Um, he'll forward it off to me. I'm not gonna read your name, ask the questions you want answered. Ask those questions and we'll go ahead and be able to dispense with those uh, for you. So with that said, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, so there you go, you, you obviously see me on video and you can see a little bit about me here. Um, over 24 years in pure cybersecurity, front lines of cybersecurity, whether it was past, uh, whether it was 10 years uh, working more on uh, policy, advice and guidance in terms of privacy and cybersecurity, uh, uh, for DHS and in with the intelligence agencies, or as a chief information security officer for two different uh, fintech organizations, or you know for those folks that are in the New England area are actually you know kind of spread all throughout, uh, right? Chief privacy officer, the first chief privacy and data protection officer for the Royal Bank of Scotland, RBS, which of course many of you would know in that locale, like right where Chris lives in Concord, he would know it as Citizens Bank in terms of uh, that one U.S. bank. Uh, and then many different years in practice, actually solving some of the largest, thorniest uh, data breaches. 
all of this has come together in terms of informing us on how we could build from the ground up an actual platform that can protect you everywhere. And that's what we've done. You can find out lots about us, about our team, all the rest, a lot of things online, uh, pretty high profile there. So let's go ahead and start right at the beginning, right? The current state of cybersecurity. So we have to have some starting point, some place by which we can all agree on where we are currently at. And it's pretty easy. Right now, we're estimated to be at $6 trillion in terms of cybercrime by the end of 2021. Now, this number is pre-COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 has been a boon for cyber criminals. And actually, starting November 1st until January 1st, it's open season. Holiday season is where cyber criminals make the most money. And it's going to be even better this year uh, because they're all going to, they all know that you're at home uh, and they can target you in many, many more ways than they used to. So six trillion there. 15 billion data records stolen. So you see it, the Target breach, Neiman Marcus breach, the British Airways breach, the Starwood breach. You see all these different breaches, right? 15 billion data records stolen. Your information is part of this, period. If you ever use the Yahoo account, right? Your information is out there. Information being about you, your potential emails, your passwords. The passwords is a key thing there. Business email compromise. For those folks that are in family offices, a single family office, or right, just doing transactions, M&A work, venture work, um, all the rest, right? $26 billion lost so far in terms of reported losses. You get out of zero onto that. Uh, nobody knows who to report to. So it's literally maybe one-tenth of the equation. Uh, but $26 billion stolen in business email compromise. And of course, right, the piece de resistance, uh, right? 94% of all breaches starting with a finger click. A phishing email, you literally giving up your day. I mean, you say, well, you know, if that's great overall, how do you actually rate this in terms of high net worth, ultra high net worth, right, folks, high profile individuals? It's pretty easy. So our population is very special. Our statistics on our population with 100% of these uh, statistics coming from exactly our clients and everyone reporting in, because we actually measure this on time one, when we onboard people, 39%, 39%, four out of 10 of our clients are hacked and compromised when we onboard them to Black Cloak. So we literally change over four out of 10 times from an onboarding into a forensic response. Hey, you got something bad? Something bad is happening? We gotta go fix you, we gotta patch you up. 75% of our clients are actually leaking data. That means that they have made privacy selections or failed to make privacy selections that match what they want or don't know how to do it, and they're leaking data. 69%, we actually give them their passwords. So in our onboarding meeting, we actually tell them, hey, Chris, your password is this. And Chris's reaction is gonna be, oh darn, that's the password to my Schwab, my Boston Private, my Northern Trust, my JP Morgan, whatever account, 69% of the time. 87% of the folks have no cybersecurity protection whatsoever on their mobile devices, nothing. If you say, hey, well, what about their laptops? It's gotta be better. 59% uh, don't, 59% don't, they have nothing. So what's at stake? What are we really talking about? We're not just talking about financial risks, right? Not talking about financial risks. Lost your confidential data, intellectual property, your single, single family office, it's gonna be investments as well as privacy invasions. So we have a number of folks that are constantly attacked on social media, that they're constantly attacked in through other different platforms, and a lot of folks who actually are attacked through their cameras. A large number of our clients have cameras that have been activated by third parties, and they're recording them. Usually they're recording the kids and usually the female children, um, because these computers are everywhere. They leave the MacBook Air and the bureau in their bedroom, they leave it here, they leave it there, and, and they're exploiting them. Risk of extortion, pretty darn high. Uh, we have this happen a lot. Sometimes it moves into a physical matter uh, in terms of physical threats and harm. And then of course, the thing you can't fix, damaged reputation, right? Your reputational risk cannot be, to, cannot be removed, um, cannot be removed, cannot be lessened. The private pictures that you have, the private family moments, the text, the tweets, the whatever, the email, things that are nobody else's business, things about you, things that you're doing, ways that you talk, things that people that you communicate with, um, these are all things that, that are much harder to protect against. So that's a little bit about what we are actually seeing. 
right? The numbers, the real live numbers. Now, a little bit of this is important in terms of like, why? Like, why is this so? It is definitely more than just money. It's really so because look, it's a totally connected world here. There is absolutely no bright line between work life and personal life. It's all blurred and it makes it easier for hackers, right? There's no difference between you, the single family office and you, the personal individual. You don't have like two different computers, two different phones, two different iPads. It just doesn't really work that way. The home environment, there's no boundaries, right? It's a connected world. Hackers are able to get ahead and get in there. You might have somebody professionally taking care of your work environment, your office, Fine. At home, you got a $50 appliance that you don't know if it's secure. You have home automation. You don't know if it's secure. Wireless. You haven't changed the password in 10 years. Why would you? You have to run around to every single TV, every single <clears throat> connected device and change it. Uh, maybe you're totally vulnerable. Maybe the bad guys are in already. Um, home automation systems, Crestron, Savant. We see those as a major, major vector of attack, uh, major vector of attack into you, your home. The cool thing about these from an attack perspective, and I say cool from an attack perspective is this, is that once you bypass the home automation, you have access to every single computer, file, network drive, TV, every single device in the home is yours as an attacker, everything. You wanna listen into the smart speaker? Boom, do so. You wanna go ahead and play something through the Sonos speaker? You can do it. You wanna go watch them on the video cameras. Yep, you wanna make the garage doors go up and down every 10 seconds, all in, right? Those IoT devices, those home automation devices allow for that. And once again, right, financial gain, yes, but extortion, ransom, IP theft, access. And the fact of the matter is, is that you're not protected at home the same way you are at the corporate landscape. There's no way you are, you just aren't. So new methods are invented every day, but really, the most common ways that you are actually intruded upon is, quote unquote, the digital break into your home, right? Literally what I just said, getting past the home automation, getting past the firewall, breaking into the home, and they have access into your entire home. You'll never know that they were there. Malware, you just go in and surf the internet, you can get malware. Uh, phishing, right? That's the almighty click. Did you click on the link? Did you click on the PDF? Were you intrigued by the Excel spreadsheet that somebody sent? It's like, hey, Q4 bonuses or new investment opportunities. Business email compromise attacks. Stolen passwords. This is, I mean, this is the easy money, right? Every single day, there are numbers of passwords that are out there on the dark web, and we'll talk about that. All you do there is you go get your email address, which just for the record, every single one of you, your personal email addresses are all out there. Super easy. It takes about 10 seconds to go ahead and grab them all. Hey, this is your personal email? Perfect. Go ahead and throw that into the dark web. We go ahead and use our intelligence engine, grab back your passwords. Is this your password? Now you might say, eh, no, it isn't. And we say, add a one at the end, add an exclamation mark. And you say, ooh, capitalize the first letter. Ah, oh, darn, right? Cyber criminals doing this all the time. They actually have an automated way to do it. So it's huge, huge. And then of course, ransomware, which we see lots of things about. So we've talked about Right? We've talked about the statistics, the cybersecurity threat matrix, and what we are seeing and what is being seen by everyone. Enormous risks on cybersecurity and privacy front. Two, we've talked to you about why you are targeted and how you are targeted. Three, we're now going to talk to you about the key risks that you and your family have. And what's important about this is it's you and your family. When you're behind the network, it doesn't matter if it's your eight-year-old, your 15-year-old, your 22-year-old, when you're behind the network, the activity and the actions of any one of those individuals will give and can give a, an adversary access to the entire network, right? It's pretty easy. You know, one person at a large company clicks on an email, it could give the adversary access into the entire environment, same thing for the home. So we're gonna to talk to you about the risks and we're gonna to talk to you about how to solve them. We're gonna do it in four different areas. Four areas, your privacy, your devices, your home, your peace of mind. Your privacy, your devices, your home, your peace of mind. We're gonna go through each. Some areas we're gonna have a few different items. Your privacy, we're gonna talk about 
publicly available information, as well as stolen credentials. For your devices, we'll talk explicitly about malware and phishing. For your home, it'll be a one uniform topic, and then peace of mind, yeah, we'll throw in a few different fun things in here and there. All right, everybody ready? Ready for the journey? Hopefully we're not going too fast. I'm from Connecticut, so I talk fast, but here we go. Your privacy. Look, the fact of the matter is this, is that you can protect yourself and your family. You can have enterprise grade cybersecurity controls with no friction in your home. You can protect yourself. I'm gonna tell you some of the ways that you can protect your privacy. We call it the attack service. So you can take your privacy attack service, and shrink it right on down. So how and where is your information shared and sold and bought and all the rest? Well, yes, dark web and everything, but let's just stay above there. Let's just stay above there on the internet. If you were to go to 411.com, 411.com, nice and easy, they're just one example, about 50 top examples, and you type in your first name, your last name, your city and your state, you press go, there'll be a data record out there. You can buy it for $4.95. There are other websites where you buy it for 95 cents. So what actually happens there is that data brokers scan all of the publicly available information on you. Property records, real estate records, transactions, SEC reports, all of this information. You ever fill out a warranty card, put your phone number on there? Boom, right, all this information, they suck it in. And they display it out there for everyone to have and to buy. That information includes your name, your addresses, your num phone numbers, your emails, age, family members, all the rest. If you want to set up a scam to target you, I don't have to go to you. Maybe you're the matriarch, patriarch of the family. Maybe you work for an IT company and you guys are in the know. I'm going to go after Junior. Right? I'm going to go after maybe your parents. Hey, I was working with uh, uh, Larry and Jennifer uh, uh, last week on their uh, the new property, the one down in Boca, and uh, we need some information from you about it. This is it. But they don't have to write close enough is good enough. All of this information that's out there on data broker websites gives the attacker a way to scam you, to get in, to socially engineer. Digress. Social media and applications. Look, the fact of the matter is, is that you can do all, you can download different apps that you want and stuff like that. You can be on social media. All those are fine. We never say no. You be on it. You want a TikTok? Go TikTok. You can do all those things. What we say is, look, Whittle down what information they're collecting. Do you need GPS on Facebook? Do you need GPS on, tracking on Instagram? Right? No, probably not. Do you need GPS address tracking on Google Maps? Well, yes, but while using. You don't need to keep it on all the time. Just while you're on Google Maps, and you don't need Google Maps to walk around your home. Uh, right? Making smart selections there. Um, the problem here is that many of these times, right, you think that you're protected because you have an iPhone. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that iPhone doesn't protect you, having smart privacy choices and making smart privacy choices protects you. So you have to do that. And risky apps. Hey, you know, okay, go ahead and download this app and that app and all the rest of it. And just you, you download and download and download. Your phone is your computer. It's got everything about you all on there, your contacts, your banks, everything about you. Uh, risky apps can actually siphon that data. So how do you protect yourself? Right? I just said, hey, big risks. How do you protect yourself? I'll tell you right now. Protect your identity, shrink the privacy attack service. The way you do that is you remove your personal and private information from these data broker websites. You monitor for changes on them, and you remove other information that can be removed or, or uh, uh, blocked from different government websites. That's how you do it. There's no like secret sauce in terms of, hey, just, you know, you just press a button or whatever, right? You actually have to go remove this stuff yourself. And it's a little game of whack-a-mole. Now, of course, you could have someone else do it for you and just be done. Social media, the fact of the matter is, is make privacy choices, smart ones, on your social media accounts. Tighten your overall settings. Ask questions, you know, ask questions. Be smart about what apps you implement and install, right? Why does somebody need permission for this? Why do you need GPS tracking on on uh you know uh airline app or just while you're using it right i mean be smart about it that's one way to go ahead and mitigate the two risks we're not going to shift into the second part of your privacy so right so everyone that's keeping up with us so the first topic was more about right first topic was more about your uh private information and data brokers and limiting some access second part is going to be all around passwords so in order to get into 99% of the websites out there, you have a username, you have a password. 
But the fact of the matter is, I mean, we'll use Nike. So, or Amazon, you know, right? Username, you know, chris at gmail.com. Password, fluffy bunny one, exclamation mark. Make it stronger, right? Uh, so you go ahead and you have your username and password. They have a breach. Well, that means that your username, your email address, and your password are out there. Now the bad guys have it. Maybe I use fluffy bunny one exclamation mark for every single one of my random accounts. It's on my Under Armour accounts, on my Nike accounts, on my Amazon accounts, on my whatever, my wine.com account. It's on all these. Well, now the bad guys know, hey, let's try this at wine.com. Let's try this at Dropbox. Let's try this at Schwab, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, right? Boston Private, Northern Trust. Let's go try it somewhere else. And we also lose our passwords by, you know, writing them down, right? We get our nice little black book. We put them in there. We lose the black book or we keep them all the same, right? And we are reusing those passwords. We're human. So we reuse those passwords. Fact of the matter is, is that on the dark web, these things are actively traded, bought, and sold all the time, all the time, every single second. So um, what hackers are doing is they're trying them. They're trying them at different banks. They're trying them at different organizations, trying them at different locations. And the fact of the matter is, is because you use the same five passwords and some people go, oh, no, 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 Chris, I got a unique one. It's like for my Hulu account, it's Chris Hulu, uh, exclamation mark. For my uh, for my uh, uh, you know Netflix accounts, Chris Netflix exclamation mark, and for my Disney accounts, Chris Disney exclamation mark. Oh, great! I mean, it's very easy when you when you go to the dark web. I get all the information about you. I can see your methodology, and I just start trying things. Chris Schwab exclamation mark. Right? Okay, now I'm in. Um, so look, the fact of the matter is, is that your passwords are creating potential vulnerabilities out there. How do you solve this? A few different ways to do it. You're only gonna solve it by doing all of these, but I'm gonna to talk to you about each one. You can choose which ones you wanna do. Maybe. Number one, figure out what's on the dark web. Not your email address on the dark web, different. Right? It's like, you know, Chris Cahill, his email address is on the website. Why is it on the website? Well, quite honestly, it's how 12 points gets business. All right, his number is on there, all right? So how he gets business. Your email address is out there. It's how you get business. It's not a business card, right? You freely send these things out. Nobody cares their email address is on the dark web. But passwords are a different thing. That's the gold spot. Can you have somebody actually tell you what password is out there so you know? So you stop using them and you change them. Second, use a unique password at each website. So the only way to do that is if you use an encrypted password vault. That means that you actually use something like LastPass, 1Password, Dashlink, you actually use an encrypted password vault or safe to go ahead and put your passwords in it, share it with your husband, wife, significant other, have a separate folder for your accountant or your lawyer, other family members, you use an encrypted password safe. What that does is it means that you have one password that you use to access it and all the passwords in there. Initially, they're yours, the same ones you're doing, but every single time you log into a different website, you change it and you go with a random password. Third, remove the weakness of a password by itself. This is called dual factor authentication. And I'm gonna slow down here. So you, in order to get to a website, in order to get to Amazon, username, email address, right? Password, right, whatever it was. If you have dual factor authentication, Amazon's gonna send you a text message. It's gonna say, hey, your code is one, two, three, four, five, six. Different code every single time you log in. It'll actually tell you, hey, do you wanna remember it on this computer? So now even if a bad guy in Russia has your username and your password and they try logging in on their computer, no joy, not happening. They're not on your computer. They're gonna get a ping, ping. Hey, no code, right? You're actually gonna get the ping and you're gonna be like, I'm not trying to log in. Someone else is probably trying to log in. Dual factor authentication means something you know and something you have, i.e. you have your phone. It also could be something you are, which is a biometric, like a fingerprint or a face ID. So dual factor authentication. And then, you know, look, I kind of have a, it's like everyone's got a little Band-Aid kit and he born in the back trunk of the car type of thing. Look, identity theft protection and monitoring is one of those Band-Aid moments. If, if, when, when somebody has stolen your identity and applies for credit, they'll tell you. Um, right, good, good bootstrap, good solution to have in the back end. Those are the things you want. Where do you want to put dual factor authentication? Email accounts, financial accounts, healthcare, social media. Now, most people might say, hey, Chris, um, 
I got a question. Was your Amazon, like, were you really serious about putting dual factor on Amazon? I don't care how many people know I had, uh, you know, I hoarded toilet paper during the first month of uh, COVID and I, I don't care if people know. Um, well, let's just break it down. So if you actually have Amazon Prime uh, and you have the music and you have movies, every single music movie that you write, watch, et cetera, is on there. Maybe you want people to know, maybe you don't. Um, if you have an Amazon Alexa device, an IoT device in your home, um, that username and password also gets you access into every single one of those devices and every voice recording that you've done. Yeah, that's where it gets interesting. Anyhow, passwords. No little black books. Get rid of the little black book. No cute entries. People are like, it's not in a little black book. It's in my phone. That's my that's my my imitation voice there. Right. Well, um, okay. Usually it's on your phone in a document that you call passwords, or it's in your contacts and it's an entry called passwords. Nobody's fooled by that. Every hacker knows where to go. Don't store them on your phone that way. So we just talked to you about privacy. Second thing we're going to talk to you about is your devices. Bottom line, folks, you can protect them all of them. So let's talk about the risks of not having a protected device. Malware could corrupt your device, could impact your device. More frequently, this is where it really gets cool, it just logs your keystrokes every single time you type. So every bank has been coded into most of these malware programs. So when you type bankofamerica.com, when you type jpmorgan.com, when you are at those websites, it wakes up and it starts recording your keystroke. What's the first thing you put in? Chris at gmail.com. Username, right? Username. And fluffy bunny one exclamation mark. Boop, password. Now they have it. They've got it. It only has to come up and wake up during that one time and go back to sleep, transmit the data. It's done. You monitor every website, just banking websites, lots of different things here. They also, malware can siphon all your personal data, your private documents. Um, that happens all the time. They say, I don't have anything that anyone would, uh, would want. Well, that, that's not true. Um, every single real estate investment, every single M and A, every single this, that, your 401k, your K, uh, um, your K ones, all this stuff. You got your social security number on there. You got this, you got that. Your pictures, all of this stuff is gold. Your contacts list actually is really gold because if I can get a hundred thousand dollars from you, yeah, a whole bunch of rich friends, man, I'm gonna retire early. So usually, usually targeted by hackers, and you'll never know about it, right? Because they can get in and out pretty quietly. The other thing is you might say, okay, Chris, uh, fine, I get it, but still, I don't care. Like, literally, I have nothing. All right, perfect, fine. Um, you have nothing that you care about somebody stealing, but what happens if I told you that your device right now is bricked? It is all encrypted, ransomware, period. You can't get access to it. And you're like, um, well, and you're like, I got a backup. I have backup drive always attached. Well, when ransomware hits your computer, it, it hits all attached drives. Now, it's encrypted. Now, do you care? This is the beauty of ransomware. Ransomware, when they actually deploy ransomware to your machine, they don't actually have to figure out whether it's valuable data or not. They set a price, and then you tell them whether it's valuable or not by paying the price. It, I mean, it's it's beauty of the free market system. So that's malware. Phishing. It's only be two things for privacy, two things for protecting your devices. Phishing. Look, the fact of the matter is, is that this is the initial vector for most pieces of malware. What actually happens is. You get in an email, it's got a link or a document. You click it, you download it, whatever. What then happens is a dropper comes onto your computer. A dropper, super small file, and it basically calls back out to what's called the command and control site, command and control server. You all might have heard the name botnet before. It calls out and it says, hey, I'm here. What do you want me to do today? Could be a, hey, I want you to go ahead and be a spam bop and send out a whole bunch of spam emails. Perfect. Could be a, hey, I want you to be a crypto miner and use your computer cycles to mine, uh, um, uh, to do a crypto mining uh, uh, currency. Okay. It could be a, hey, you're ransomware today. Boom. Encrypted device. Or it could be a, hey, you know, that's kind of a, quite honestly an interesting device. It says, a, you know, it says a Bill Gates laptop. I don't know. Maybe there's no other Bill Gates in the world. So let's go ahead and put on keystroke logging. That's a good one to go for. Anyhow, fact of the matter is, is that it will go ahead and grab that information and it all started just with one click. Everyone is a target. It's really hard to detect whether something's real or not. We actually go ahead and we get the forwards of all of our client emails and, and uh, that they want us to look at, right? They'll forward somebody like, hey, is this real or not? And we go ahead and we take it, we spin it up in a fake computer, we click on it in that fake computer. And if it launches and, and it is malware, we don't care. We kill the computer and we're good.
Um, but but um, everyone's a target and really, really hard to tell. I'm gonna actually show you a few fun uh, emails. Now, uh, you'll see websites here. These are real websites. If you go to the websites, you will be compromised at the websites. It's like there's no, there's no fake stuff. This is real malware. So if you were to type in the, the email addresses that are here, the different things that are here, uh, different websites, you will get malware. So don't. Um, this one's cool, right? It's obviously a Russian language pack that's been, uh, or Cyrillic language pack that's been added in. Um, and they're trying to do a little head fake. If you see at the bottom, cdcgov.org, right? There's no right, cdcgov.org, no, cdc.gov. But even then, you can make it say anything you want to. This one's great because look, you know, it says cdc.gov here and here it says from. Well, you can make your from name anything you want. You say, well, you shouldn't be able to. Well, what happens if I don't want my from name to be Christopher? I want it to be Chris. Oh, yeah, you can edit it. Yeah, you can. Uh, or you can edit it, the from name, first name, last name, be anything you want. This one says the from name is cdc-info. It's actually sent from iplowllc.com. All right, it's not sent from the CDC. I like this one, you know, nice little easy safety measures for coronavirus. But I like this one better because it's got a blue button. It's like I know where to click, right? Boom, blue, it's got to be that good. Uh, and internal emails. I mean, these are all the things COVID-19 has just hit a huge, huge, uh, you know, push in terms of uh, malware um, out there. Huge push. Um, you know, really, really easy to, really easy to get into people's inbox. Really easy to make them click. So, all right. We did the bad news, let's go to the good news, right? How do you solve it, Chris? The fact of the matter is, is you gotta make sure every single device, every single device, folks, cell phone, tablet, computer, every single device has anti-malware protection on it. If you buy consumer grade stuff, you'll get up to about 40 to 50% protection. That's about what you can hit. The reason why is it's mostly signature-based. <clears throat> signature-based means see a guy wearing a blue shirt, stop him. You see a guy wearing a blue and white pinstripe shirt, it won't stop them because it's not, right, not hitting the signature. It's got to be correctly coded. Um, that's good, right? I mean, it's, it's better than nothing. 59% uh, of our clients have nothing. Um, but you have to make sure you at least have something. Patch and update your devices, patch and update your applications. Maintain backups back to the ransomware. Look, the fact of the matter is you can have the best of the best of the best, but the only way to actually know that you're 100% protected is to have a backup and a backup that's not connected to your computer, right? Not connected to your computer. You connect it, back up, unconnect it, disconnect it, put it in the safe. I do wanna spend 30 seconds on this point. <clears throat> Macs get malware. Uh, I don't know where it was said. It's like, you know, no, Macs never, Macs get malware, tons of malware. Macs get malware. Nobody knows about it because nobody has a solution that's running on their Macs. A lot of people don't because they just believe Macs don't get malware. Um, Macs get malware. The record at, at Black Cloak is about 241 pieces of malware on a Mac. Not a Windows machine, Mac. Um, Macs get malware. You have to protect Macs as well. Um, really, the answer at the end of the day in terms of what you should be doing, your high net worth, your ultra high net worth, um, the risks are bigger for you, um, the threats are bigger for you, quite honestly, your bigger target, um, is to really have enterprise grade cybersecurity tools, monitoring, security operations center, Right, folks that are actually using artificial intelligence, not signatures, the blue shirt, blue and white pinstripe. No, 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 no. Person on a ladder wearing black at 2 a.m. with a flashlight in their mouth, a crowbar in their hand, stop them. Who cares what shirt they have on? You stop the behavior, not looking at the color of their, their attire. Um, that's really where this population needs to be. So two things, your privacy, risks in shrinking that attack service, your devices, right? Getting the protection there from phishing, all the rest. And three, your home. We already talked about this a little bit, but think about it this way. You lock your doors, you lock your windows, you are there making sure that you are protected from physical theft, burglary. Every window, you got a you know, little pinger on. If somebody opens it, it's dee -dee -dee -dee, right? And you have that alarm system on, right? It's a lawn, you know where it is, you know it's watching you. But do you have your home protected from digital theft? And the answer for most people, is no. Most people is no. You saw 39% uh, uh, number earlier, right? The Wi-Fi does not have a unique name, right? You've named it Bill Gates Wi-Fi. Yeah, wow, big target. Um, you don't have a strong password on there. Your home automation systems, hey, the guy who installed it said, it's great, it's green, it's fast, it's speedy. What does that mean? Who cares? Like, is it secure? 
or can you just hack straight in from the outside? Mostly you can hack straight in, they're not cybersecurity professionals. Internet of Things devices. <clears throat> but I mean, at some point in time, this is a, do you need something else, right? Do you need something else? Do you need to make sure that your devices are protected? The only way to do it, think, think about it this way. Um, you, you know, you, you think you're doing a good job with, uh, you think you're doing a good job with your health. What's the only way to know? The only way to know is go get a blood test, go get a physical, go get a, you know, go over the whoop de doo service and make sure everything's good. I mean, if, if, how do you know if you have high cholesterol? You could be totally, look totally normal, uh, but you have high cholesterol, it's genetically you have it, or, you know, your LDLs are too high, whatever it is, right? Um, the only way to know is to get a blood test. And then like, if there's something in there to follow up, you know, it's like once a quarter, once a year, twice a year, whatever it is, whatever floats your boat. Um, the only way to know what your cholesterol is, is to take it. The only way to know if your home is secure is to hack it every single week to have somebody try to break in. That's the only way to know. That's it. I mean, you literally have that degree of knowledge and degree of comfort with your, your alarm system. Think about it. You set your alarm system once a day, you go out, right? You hear the little bing on the window or the door, the sliding glass door, you know that it's working. Like you're quite honestly, you're testing it like each and every day. If it doesn't, if you open up the door and it doesn't go, beep, 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 you know something's not working, but you don't do that on your home. And your home has everything that's in there. You're not scanning the network in terms of botnets and command and control and malware. So those are some things that definitely, definitely can be done. Item four, right, or I should say item four, right? So we did the privacy, we did the devices, we did the home, peace of mind. Peace of mind means that technology is changing, the scams are changing, everything is changing so rapidly making sure that you have, are educating yourself, that you have a concierge, that you have someone being able to give you and protect you and give you that peace of mind is key, is critical. And it's not just about you, it's about your family and it's about your children, right? It's about everyone together. Don't forget the physical stuff. Don't forget, hey, the shredding, the camera protectors, all the rest of these. Don't forget the, you know, and please trust me folks, like I get it, but you know, at Thanksgiving, don't put your friends and your relatives on the main Wi-Fi network. Put them on the uh, guest Wi-Fi network and name your guest Wi-Fi network. If you think it's going to cause problems, like between in-laws and stuff like that, name your Wi-Fi network, the guest one, you know, faster network and say, hey, I'm putting you on the faster network. Be like, oh my God, that's awesome. You love us. We do. We don't want you to stay over the summer, but we do love you, right? Put them on the faster, uh, put them on the, the guest Wi-Fi network and staying up to date overall on scams, always changing always changing, always evolving. You know, obviously higher level protection there is, look, having holistic cybersecurity, that's gonna be there protecting you every step of the way, doing the heavy lifting, staying on top of those threads. You don't have time to do it, having somebody else do it with you and for you. You know, who are we? We're Black Cloak, Concierge Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection. This presentation is supposed to be, right, it's supposed to be educational. It's supposed to be educational to you in terms of talking to you about your privacy, your devices, your homes, ultimately your peace of mind. Some different examples of what, what clients do. I mean, we break them up. This is not our sell sheet, but you know, literally reflects back to all these different risks, right? The advanced device protection and monitoring, home scanning, deep and dark web scanning, removing information from the internet brokers and hardening the choices you have on those devices, <clears throat> doing the continuous scans and botnet scanning of the homes and other things like well, I wanna do a password safe, but I just don't know where to get started. And it's gonna take me hours. Yeah, and we do it with you and for you, right? We do it with you. So those are some of the things that you can do there. Um, I'm obviously, I'm Chris Pearson. Uh, Chris Cahill knows how to get a hold of me directly. Our general company information is blackcloak.io. That's blackcloak, C-L-O-A-K.io. Um, info at blackcloak.io if you wanna email in, in there. Um, otherwise, just, dovetail in with Chris. Chris can get you straight into me. Um, you see some different screenshots of our technologies and stuff there. But a really, really, really big thank you um, to everyone for being so attentive. I do want you to have time to ask questions, to get answers to questions that you have. It's super important to me. Um, we have, we have really a important. couple of, yeah. we do have a couple of questions here for you, Chris. So one, one question that came across was, what's the um, impact of cyber insurance in that marketplace. How does that work? Yep, so cyber insurance, so cybersecurity insurance um, uh, helps you out in two different areas. Um, there's first the business side, 
right? So businesses have cybersecurity insurance and usually cyber crime insurance. And cyber crime insurance is sometimes called crime or fraud insurance. Those policies are the same as healthcare, right? Like when you get into a bad accident, it'll help you, right, recuperate. It doesn't prevent the accident. Um, we're on the prevention side, the insurance is on the opposite side, but it Got is it. a necessary tool and they go hand in hand. You want to have both. You don't get into your car and just say, eh, I've got insurance, I'm not gonna wear my seatbelt. Um, and you don't get into your car and wear your seatbelt and airbags and say, eh, I don't, what, what health insurance? I don't need any, uh, right? Not a good idea. So they are complementary uh, to one another. Similarly applies in your personal life, but a little bit less. Most policies, um, there are a few policy holders out there and a few companies that write um, cybersecurity insurance for family offices and, and really the principals and the families. Um, so there are a few mm -hmm. out there that do that. Once again, same analogy. Um, you wanna have both ends covered. Yes, yeah, good question. Great, thank you. One other question that I think is probably a little basic, but no. certainly a good one, I think is, what really is the dark web? You've referred to it a ton, and you know we, as lay people, we hear that, but it doesn't register certainly to me and to others because I had that question. So what what is it for those of us that don't understand that? Yeah, good, good, good question. Great question. So um, you know when you take a look at all the web traffic that's on the internet, there is a, it's like a glacier. There's like twenty percent of it that's above water, and eighty percent of the mass is underwater, or whatever the right equivalent is for glaciers these days. Um, right, but about 20% above water, 80% under. The dark web is the stuff that's underneath the surface, right? It can hit your, right? It can it can strike the side of your ship and cause it to rip open and sink, um, right? It's really those risks that are under there. Another example would be this. Um, think about it. Think about it as in a a CD area of um, right, like a red light district, a CD area of New York City. Um, right, there's New York City and sometimes bad things happen there, but then there's like a whole separate underground. There's a whole separate area. And on that area are a lot of guns and knives and tanks and bombs and a lot of drugs and child pornography and terrorism and murder for hire and all the rest. Um, there's also a big, big component of identity theft and fraud and trading in stolen data. Um, you know, like credit card information is something called FOLS, F-U-L-Z, right? FOLS, that's, that's where it has your name, your address, your social security number, your date of birth, and the credit card information. One FOLS equates to about 60 to $70. To, I don't know what the, I didn't look at today, what the going rate is. Last week it was like 60 to $70. It's better if you have a higher rating and all the rest. But basically the dark web is where you go to buy, sell, and trade that information your usernames are out there, your passwords are out there, and a lot of other stuff is out there. It's a place where you don't want to go. Um, you don't want to go at all. Um, you have to have special tools to get there. Anyone can potentially do it. I'm really, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of like the red light district. I'm suggesting, even though you could technically go there and go down to the sub basement level three, I'm suggesting you probably shouldn't, because um, uh, there's not a lot of good stuff down there. Um, so, but that's a little bit of an explanation there. Cool, thanks. And I think you started out by discussing the fact that during this pandemic, um, cyber criminals have been particularly active, and so many of us are working from home today. Um, one thing that's come across the desk of many of, of the folks that, that we know are um, <laughs> rampant unemployment fraud claims being filed <laughs> here in Massachusetts. Can you just oh, yeah. spend a second talking about that? Like, why would they think that that's a good idea? Because the paperwork gets sent out to the client. The client says, I didn't file unemployment, and they cancel it at the level of the government. So do they make money off of this? Oh, yeah. They're making a killing off of it. Um, they're absolutely making a killing off of it. Um, so even though some of the crime is perpetrated from abroad, there are certain mules that actually will go around and actually collect in the money, collect in the checks and all the rest. So it's a whole complicated uh, underground trade system. So what is actually happening right now is unemployment is at the state level, but sometimes there's county and city and other involvements. But just think about it this way. Do those places have, uh, do those places have really good fraud checks, like the same as a bank? No. Do they have know your customer requirements like a bank? No. Do they require extra documentation like a bank and coming in person and all around? No, especially now COVID, right? No. Right now we are seeing a humongous increase in unemployment fraud. And if you've been a victim of it, so if you're on today's call and you're like, yeah, that happened to me, 
you need to be prepared for wave two. Wave two is a small, uh, uh, a small business loan application. Um, uh, so those being taken out in your name and that's straight cash, straight money uh, coming, back, uh, coming back to the bad guys. So um, really lucrative for them. The things that you can do to go ahead and, and make yourself a harder target. Number one, reduce all the data broker information that's out there about you. Why? Mm -hmm. It makes them have to work for it. They don't like to work, they'll move on to another target. Two, go ahead and have identity theft protection in monitoring. Um, that's really a great thing to do in terms of a small business loan, but quite honestly, you can do it all right now, all right now in 20 minutes. File three, credit freezes. Three, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. Three, take you five, six, seven minutes a piece, you're done. Nobody can take out credit in your name. They can still file unemployment, but not do the small business loan. Um, and so those are the things that are really hitting now. The other thing is, is that people are taking advantage of it now because many of the different agencies and agency workers that are actually going ahead and processing this, they're not in the office. They can't yell over the cube to someone else. They don't have all the systems in there. Um, so it's, uh, we, we've seen, we've had entire executive teams at like top investment banks uh, be taken, large banks, um, or some of our Fortune 100 clients have been taken. Um, so look, the fact of the matter is, is that the only way to not be taken here, reduce your privacy footprint, your tax surface, mitigate things as well as much as you can, make sure the leak isn't coming from you. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, thank you so much for your time today, Chris. Really appreciate it. Clearly a professional in this space. Um, I'm certain that, that the folks on the web webcast here are enjoying this. It will be recorded and put on um, the site. So thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you soon. Enjoy the weather in Florida. At least it's not <laughs> snowing. There you go. Absolutely. Hey, thank you, Chris. Thank you to 12 Points. And thank you to all of you, the attendees for today. Really appreciate it. Get in touch with Chris for any questions, comments, concerns, and we're more than happy to help you out there as well. Thanks, Chris. Be well. Thank you, sir.